Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this video, we're going to keep building our Flappy Bird game. Now, so far, we have eight videos on how to create Flappy Bird. And if you watch this playlist from the beginning up until this point, you're going to have the basic game mechanics of Flappy Bird built and working. So that's pretty cool. Now, we want to add two more videos to this playlist and these videos are going to help our, your users be able to replay your game over and over and over because right now we have the gameplay working but players will play once and if they die then there's no way to restart the game and so in this video we're going to be creating a game over screen which is going to have a replay button and a main menu button and in the next video we're going to create a main menu to top off the playlist and that main menu is going to have a play button to start the game. But let's get started. So here we have Unity open and the first thing that we're going to want to do is create our game over panel or our game over screen. And so to do this we're going to go to our canvas and we're going to select it and then right click and go down to UI then panel. Now a panel is a really helpful UI element. It's essentially a UI image. The only difference is that it has a source image, whereas a UI image starts with no source image. You have to add a source image. And you can change the source image of your panel if you want it to look different, but right now it's set to the default background image, which has a little bit of a, an edge, a border. It's a tiny curve in the corners and a little black line and then it's got a transparent white. And so these panels are used to hold other UI elements as children and that way you can toggle on and off different menu components or menu screens. And so this is going to be our game over menu. and what we want to do first is we want to change the name of this panel to something like game over panel. Then what we want to do is we're actually going to select the color of our panel and drag the alpha down to zero. This is going to make our panel transparent because I don't really want to cover up our game scene. I just want to have text appear or text and buttons appear to prompt the players that they've lost. Now what we want to do is create a game over title so that the players know that they've lost the game. So I'm going to re I'm going to right click on the game over panel, go to UI and then text. And we're going to rename this to game over game over text. And what we want to do is we want to go to our text field in our text script component and we're going to type game space over. Now what we want to do is we want to position our game over text in the right position for our scene. And so I'm going to go to our rec transform component of our game over text and clicking on this box we can select the anchor presets. So I'm going to actually select the bottom right because that's the easiest one to modify in my opinion, which sets the anchor points to the edges of our screen. You can see these little triangles in each corner. Now you can actually click on these triangles and drag them to wherever you'd like. And so I want to have our game over text title to be probably at 30% from the top to the bottom of our text box, then I'm actually going to reduce that by clicking on the top anchors and drag those down to about 10. So we have a 10% gap from the top of our screen and then a 20% text box. Now what we want to do is we want to change a bit of the text settings. So if you're creating your own game over screen. What you can do actually is create a game over image and you can 
make it really cool and pretty and maybe have it match the same theme as your Flappy Bird game. And so, for example, this Flappy Bird, the original Flappy Bird, is like an 8-bit graphic, graphical game. And so everything's kind of got uh, pixely, pixelated objects, images, and borders. And so you could make a really pixelated text in Photoshop or something like that and add a cool border. And then you would export that as an image, not a text or a font or anything like that, but it would just be an image. And then you could, rather than ha adding a text object, just add a UI image and then apply that image that you created in Photoshop. And you can also do that for all the buttons that you create. And so actually one thing that we could do is in our sprite sheet, there's buttons that we could use. So there's a main menu button. So I'll show you both. I'll show you a text and I'll show you with using a image, but they actually have game over image. So let's, let's do that. So I'm going to do it with text and then we'll come back and do it with images. I just had that thought. Another thing that you can do when, if you're just using text is you can find really cool fonts on the internet for free and you would drag the font file into your file system for your project and then you'd then drag that font into this font field on your text script. And so you could find a pixelated font and that would work really well as well but you can do it either way. Now what we want to do when we're using text is we want to select best fit and change the max size to something like 100. And then we want to zero out the transforms. So we change the anchors, but that won't do anything unless we zero out the left, the top, the right, and the bottom. And I actually don't want the left and right to be zero. I want it to be something more like 10. And so this is saying 10 pixels from the left side of the screen and 10 pixels from the right side of the screen is where our text box is going to be. And so this helps our text from not touching the edges of our screen. So another way that you could do this is if we select our Flappy Bird sprite sheet, go to the text editor, and I'm going to find the game over text right here. And we can delete one of them, so I'm going to delete the over because it didn't slice the image the way that it should be because this should all be one sliced image. Then I'm going to drag the game image over so that it, it adds both the game and the over together. And so right about there. And now we can go ahead and hit apply, and that's going to give us both words in the same image right here. And now I can right click on our game over panel, go to UI and then image. And what we want to do is we want to make the anchor points the same as our game over text. So I'm going to drag those down and these up. And then I'm going to select our game over image and drag it into our image or our source image of our image component. And now what we need to do is we need to make the same transform. So 10 from the left, 0 from the top, zero, uh, 10 from the right, and 0 from the bottom. So that looks pretty good. It's a little pixelated, like it's a little blurry because I'm guessing the resolution of our image isn't very good. And so if you're using original images and you've created them yourself and they're big enough, then they shouldn't get very blurry as this one kind of is. Anyway, so that's one, th both those ways are acceptable. I would, pref I would personally go with creating my own images for the game over and all the buttons. And so, Let's go ahead and rename this one to Game Over Image. 
and we can actually select our game over text and just hide it by selecting this or unchecking this box next to the name in the inspector. So now it just says game over. Now what we want to do is we want to create two buttons for our game over panel. One's going to be for our replay and the other is going to be for our main menu. So I'm going to select button from the UI and let's rename this to replay. And what we want to do is go to the text child. So every button when you create it default comes with a text child. And so we can type replay in this uh, text field. And now we can see that the replay button says replay rather than just button. Now what we want to do is go back to our replay button and not the text child and drag it up in the Y direction. So it's probably right about there. And we can make it a solid number like 130. And so I'm just going to use the default buttons. But if you wanted to do the same principle as our game over title, you could create your own replay button in Photoshop. And then you wouldn't actually necessarily need the text child if your button says replay on it. But then you would have to create a button for every button that says a different word. So you would have to create a button for replay, a button for main menu, and so on. Unless what you did was you created just the border for your button, and then you found a really cool pixelated font on the internet, you could have your border for the button, and then your text child you would add that pixelated font so that it looks cool and it matches the button and you can change the color of the text and so on and that way you could have one standard button image and then you would just change the word in the text child so that's that's a lot of information I don't expect you to remember everything if you didn't quite catch all that you can go back and listen to me talk about it or leave me a comment in the yeah or a question in the comments below. But let's move on. Now what we want to do is duplicate our replay button. Let's rename it to main menu. And let's drag it down in the Y position so that it's not overlapping our replay button. So I'm going to just make this 85. And now what we want to do is go to our text child and type main menu space menu so with this button we're not actually going to add the functionality for this button until next video when we create our main menu uh, but we will add functionality to the replay button and let's go ahead and start adding functionality to our game so that we can register the game over panel to appear and we're going to add a function to the replay button Let's go to our scripts folder and open our player controller. Once you have the player controller opened in Visual Studios, we need to add a variable to hold our game over panel. And so it's going to be a public game object. And whoops, game object. And we're going to call this game over panel. Now what we need to do is we need to find every instance that our isGO variable, our Boolean variable, is set to true. And so there's two that we've coded. So one is in the on trigger enter 2D when we check to see if the the other dot tag is equal to death zone, we then set isGO to true. And also on the on collision enter 2D when we check the other dot transform dot tag equals game over or not game over death zone we then set is geo to true and so right after we set is geo to true we want to call a function and so this is going to actually be an i enumerator function and i enumerator functions are used to uh, wait a certain amount of time or a certain amount of frames before we execute the code inside. And so 
this is going to be our wait for go function. And inside this function, there's a special line of code that we need to call. And it is yield return and then new. And we want to type wait for seconds. And then inside parentheses, we need to specify the amount of time that we want to wait. And so we, for now, I'm just going to type a two for two seconds and then semicolon. And after this line of code is where we type all the lines of code that we want to execute after two seconds. And so the first is going to be to activate our game over panel. So I'm going to type game over panel and then dot set active. So set active is a function, a member function of the game object class. And because it's a function, we need parentheses and then we can pass it a Boolean value. And so we want to set it equal to true. What this function does is it toggles on and off the little checkbox that we talked about earlier that's right next to the name of the object selected in the inspector. So now what we can do is we want to actually freeze time for our game. So I'm going to type time dot time scale. Whoops, I want this one. Okay, so time scale is a member function of the time class and what it does is it sets the time scale of your update functions and every execution. So button clicks are still going to work. If you click a UI element, those are still going to work. But our update functions won't execute because our time scale is set to zero. Or in other words, it's paused. If we set our time scale equal to 0.5, then it would our game would play half the speed. It would be slow motion. If we did set set it equal to two, then it would run double time. So time dot uh, time scale, and we're gonna set it equal to zero, and then semicolon. Now what we want to do is call this function inside our death or inside our if conditions where we check to see if death zone was the tag. So right after isgo, we're going to say start coroutine, and inside parentheses, we're going to call our wait for go function, or wait for game over. Then we need a semicolon, and I'm going to actually copy this line and paste it in our on collision enter 2D right underneath our is go equals true. So both conditions, whenever we enter a trigger zone that's tra tagged with a game, uh, death zone, or we collide with an object like the ground or the pipes that are also tagged with the death zone, we're going to then call this function. It's going to wait two seconds. Then it's going to enable or turn on our game over panel, and it's going to freeze time. So pretty cool. Our time, dot time scale, that line of code can also be used for pausing games. If you had a little pause button in the top corner of your game, you, when players click that, you could activate a pause menu. And then you could set the time scale to zero. And then when they hit a resume button, you could set the time scale to one and hide the pause menu. So that's another implementation of what we're doing here. So it, it's, it can be used for game over panels and pause menus. So let's go ahead and save this. And now let's go back to Unity and test this to, to see how it works. So with Unity opened, we're going to first select our player. And right here, you can see in our player controller, we have our game over panel. And we need to set it a value. So we want to select our game over panel and drag it into that field. Now what we can do is select our game over panel and we want to toggle it off. So set it inactive. And we're going to do that by checking this box next to the name in the inspector. And now what we can do is we can hit play 
And as we play, we can run into something like the ground. And after two seconds, boom, our game over panel pops up. And that's as far as it goes because we haven't coded our replay button or our main menu button. And so we're stuck right here. So we haven't completed the loop that I was talking about, but we're gonna do that right now. So let's go back to Visual Studios and we're gonna select our game controller script. And the reason why we wanna select our game controller script is because the code that's related to the game in general and, and navigation through your game should be in a script that holds all the other code that is related to the game. And so we're not going to put this in the player controller script because the script or the code inside the player controller script should mostly pertain to the player. For example, if you click the screen and the bird flaps, that is something that the player should control and keep track of. And so the first thing that we're going to do in the game controller script is we need to add a new namespace. So this is going to be using Unity Engine and then dot scene manager or management scene management then we need a semicolon and the scene management allows you to load new scenes and so let's go down and create a new function and this needs to be a public function because we're going to add it to a button and we're going to type void let's call this replay function In the curly braces, what we want to do is we want to first set the time scale, so time.timescale, back to one. And we want the reason why we want to do this is we don't we want to just make sure that everything was reset the way it was. So we're resetting the time scale because if we're not setting it to one, then we're not guaranteed that it's going to reset to one when we load a new scene. And so once we've set it to one, we now want to load our same scene, our, our game scene. So we're going to call the scene manager. And this is this class is only accessible if you have the using unity engine dot scene management. So otherwise you won't be able to call the scene manager and once you type scene manager we're going to call the uh, member function of that class which is scene load scene it's load scene in parentheses we then need to pass this function a parameter and the parameter that we pass is the index of our scene and so right now since we only have one scene it's going to be zero but in our next video, when we create our main menu, we're going to have two scenes, and our main menu is going to need to come before our game scene because we want players, when they first open the app or the game, we want the main menu to be the first thing they see. So the main menu will be index 0 and the game scene will be index 1. But we will change that in the next video. So let's go ahead and then save this. Make sure that all your scripts are saved. Let's go back to Unity. And now all we need to do is apply this function to our replay button. So I'm gonna, re I'm gonna select our replay button. And then even if it's inactive or a parent object's inactive, you can still modify it in the inspector. So on the onClick field, I'm gonna click this plus button. And then we need to drag in our game controller script or the object that holds our game controller script. So I'm going to select our game controller object, drag it into this field right below runtime only. And then in this no function, we're going to select it, which is a drop down menu, go to game controller and then find our replay function. Once you select that, we can then go ahead and test it. So I'm going to hit play and you can see we're playing our game. The ground is moving. When we start, oh, I hit a pipe. I died. And our game over panel or uh, screen appears. 
and our game is paused you can see that because the ground isn't moving if we hadn't set the time dot time scale to zero then the ground would still be moving and the pipes would still be spawning and so we set it to zero it's paused and now when i hit the replay button it starts the game over so now we have that looping cycle that i was talking about which is really important because that's what's going to keep people playing your game if you didn't have a full loop or a full circle in your game then people would have to exit the app or cancel it or kill it or anything like that and then they would have to reopen it in order to play it again again and so that would be really annoying if every time they died they had to kill their app and start it over so this is really important let's let's uh show you a few more times so i'm playing i got a score of one if i die by running into a pipe i wait two seconds and the game over panel appears the main menu still doesn't work because that we're going to cover that in the next video but the replay button works and it restarts the game and i can do this as many times as i as i like or as i feel so it's pretty awesome so that's everything that we're going to cover in this video we hope you enjoyed watching and we hope it made sense and that you can now implement game over scenes and replay buttons in your own games you don't have to just use this concept in a Flappy Bird game, you can use this concept in tons of games out there. And make sure that you like and subscribe to this video and share with your friends, and we'll see you next time.